In fact, uh, actually, we have three kind of signals that can be used for monitoring uh, NIV. Uh, first group of signals include uh, the flow and pressure curves that are usually stored in the internal memory of the ventilators. Flow is the total uh, gas delivered by the ventilator and the pressure is the pressure that uh, this flow creates in the respiratory system and in the circuit of the patient. This, uh, two, these two signals uh, inform us about the, uh, what is doing the ventilator. Uh, a second group of signals are the related to the ventilatory pattern of the patient and the effort of the patient. Uh, this uh, includes uh, two types of signals. The first one is the respiratory inductance platysmography uh, measured by abdominal and thoracic belts that inform us about the ventilatory pattern of the patient, inspiratory time, expiratory time, synchrony uh, with the ventilator and so on. And a second uh, signal in this group would be the uh, parasternal electromyogram or esophageal pressure, that, that uh, signals that are not commonly used in the clinical practice. Uh, a third group of signals uh, include the consequence of the patient ventilator interactions in the blood gas exchange, and it would be the oxygen saturation and transcutaneous CO2. In the clinical practice, uh, we usually download the information stored in the internal memory of the ventilator, the, the, means pressure and flow uh, curves, and sometimes uh, we need uh, additional information, some additional information, including uh, uh, abdominal and thoracic belts and oxygen and transcutaneous CO2 monitoring. Yes, there is a well-known flow chart. First of all, uh, we, we have to assess the compliance of the patient with the ventilator. And uh, the main uh, outcome would be to, to achieve a compliance of minimum four hours per day with uh, non-fragmented sleep. The second step would be the assessment of non-intentional leakage. Uh, the third uh, step would be the assessment of uh, periodic flow reductions, suggesting upper airway obstruction. And finally, uh, the fourth step would be the patient ventilatory asynchrony. The main recommendation is to proceed in a strictly order. Uh, if we assess, for example, see how our patient uh, has leak, uh, we don't uh, need to go further. Uh, the, the proper way to, to proceed is to correct the list, the leaks, and reassess the, the patient. Yes. Uh, if we have, for example, a patient with uh, obesity hypoventilation syndrome, uh, it's uh, highly likely that this patient uh, could have uh, upper airway obstruction. And in this setting, it's uh, useful to have the information uh, coming from the abdominal and thoracic belts to classify this obstruction with effort and without effort. Uh, for example, uh, if we have a neuromuscular patient, uh, it would be necessary to use uh, transcutaneous CO2 instead of SPO2 uh, monitoring because uh, neuromuscular patients can have a normal SPO2 and uh, a poor control of nocturnal hypoventilation. No, uh, there are certain situations in which it's not enough to check the SpO2. The first one would be the patient, for example, a COPD patient using uh, oxygen coupled to the ventilator. Uh, in this setting, uh, a good uh, SpO2 during overnight uh, could not rule out uh, a poor control of nocturnal hypoventilation. Uh, as I told before, the second situation would be a neuromuscular patient. Typically, a neuromuscular patient has a normal uh, alveolo arterial gradient and uh, a good SpO2 control overnight uh, could not be related to a good hypoventilation control. In this case, uh, we need, in both cases, the assessment of continuous monitoring by transcutaneous CO2 measurement. Uh, 
in a well ventilated patient of uh, or if we are satisfied with the with the outcome of the ventilation it would uh, it would be only necessary to download the data stored in the internal memory of the ventilator for example assessment of compliance assessment of leaks and assessment of automatic uh, obstruction index in case our patient is not well ventilated for example if uh, the compliance is poor if uh, there are leaks or the patient uh, feels uncomfortable with the ventilator or the arterial blood gases are not corrected, it's important to proceed in strictly order with the four steps I explained before. That is assessment of compliance, assessment of leaks, assessment of obstruction, and assessment of patient ventilator asynchrony. It depends of the, of the control of hypoventilation. Yes, I strongly recommend the Somno NIV papers in Thorax, uh, which explain clearly the tools we have for uh, NIV monitoring and how to proceed in each situation.